Hello world of YouTube. You may be expecting the listening log update today because I promoted it to come out today on all of my other socials. But given I had a bit of a health spill over uh, the weekend and it kind of took away from my filming time and pulling together time, a lot of my finalizing or sort of rounding out my thoughts on some of the projects. Um, so I'm going to push that back uh, for a little bit, and instead I'm going to drop the video today that was supposed to come out on Sunday, and it is a reflection on an album by a band that I've talked about recently that was sort of a, I felt like was like a niche pocket within my musical experience growing up. They were a band that I really enjoyed uh, the earlier output of, but got into them uh, around the time of their dissolvement, but to my surprise... As a guy in his 20s, they came back for a brief period of time and teased a record that they dropped on Valentine's Day, but also feels very poignant to talk about now, given some of its thematics and lyrical imagery and all of that stuff. And it's a record that surprisingly saw them taking their sort of postmodern edge and grounding it in a well-rounded reality. I'm talking about what has now become the final album by Chibomato, Hotel Valentine. Deja vu, deja vu, deja vu. Now, frequent viewers of the channel have seen me gas this record the fuck up for years. Because it was on my albums of the year in 2014, I really loved it then, and my love has only grown to the fact that it ended up on my albums of the decade list at the end of the decade. This is... Very much a comfort record for me, you know, in a way that LP's Cancer for Cure, even Damn or uh, Nonagon Affinity aren't. I just, I have this record on a heavy rotation. And I think it's because I really appreciate what Miho and Yuka pulled together on Hotel Valentine. You know, it is a tight 37 minute listen, but I think it keeps its thematics at its core so very well. The imagery and its lyrics is fantastic you know the overall sonic palette of this project is still a lot of what i love from this project but there's some modern injections in there as well you know yeah there's a, a handful of tracks where it feels like they're just sort of re-welcoming themselves back into the scene with stuff that sounds like their stuff like check-in and deja vu um the title track and uh empty pool also kind of have their typical airiness or trip hop infusions in their um, checkout as well kind of feels like almost a reflection of even their earlier days. But I like how, you know, amidst all of those tracks, there are some tracks that just have this newer presentation for them, like Motherfucking Nature with, with its really abrasive, noisy production, or housekeeping with its use of Reggie Watts's uh, vocal beatbox style. And I like how they even fuse some of those as well, like on um, the one-two punch of 10th Floor Ghost Girl and Emerald Tuesday that have this great brass work with some tight drum work and some good bass in there as well, with some modern stings, whether it be in some of the production styles or some of the electronics fused in there as well. I also think um, while tracks like Empty Pool and Hotel Valentine kind of have uh, their own typical style, some of the percussion production still feels in line with like the 2010s as a whole. It feels like an update on their sound holistically. And I feel like because lyrically this record has a concept and it has this sort of thematics with hotels, suck it, Arctic Monkeys, Hotel Valentine did it years before you guys did with Tranquility Bass. Their Shibuya Kai influence sort of feels at home here with the whole hotel aspect of the of the lyrics, you know? I feel like the, the grooves that are on this record are just insane. Like Deja Vu, for as much as I'll have to say about the lyrics of that track in general, the overall groove of it is just infectious as hell. You know, when it breaks down and Miho starts rapping, the bass that just keeps the groove rocking is Ace's stuff. 
top tier stuff. And while it kind of comes off of the heels of the grooves of 10th Floor Ghost Girl, I think the whirlwind style of Emerald Tuesday almost lends to the sort of anxiety and the the sample usage on that track and, and uh, 10th Floor Ghost Girl also, again, just feel like vintage Chibomato. But Emerald Tuesday in general, with its like organ sampling and its horns that come in with that just hypnotic drum groove it settles into this sort of again paranoia ish style that i think is incredible i think that this record just sounds fantastic it sounds tight it sounds as tight as its runtime is without sounding samey because they they know when to switch it up they know when to throw some ambience in there some good grooves you know a catchy chorus some noisy abrasiveness uh, at the right moments to sort of entice the listener from a sonic experience. And I feel like all of that is is unified even more, again, by that lyrical theme of the hotel, not only just in, in title, like in check-in, empty pool, lobby, housekeeping, checkout, like there's song titles that allude to, to that hotel life, but the lyrics themselves um, with ghosts. Again, this is sort of, I'm talking about this during the spooky season, because ghosts are a, a central theme of this record. You know, ghosts falling in love in this hotel. And they're what has seemingly been an eternal life spent in this hotel. You know, and I like that the perspective sort of jumps back and forth. You know, between the real world and the ghost world. Because you have tracks like Deja Vu, which lyrically just feels like a great representation of Deja Vu. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know, I anytime I have Deja Vu, I have like a, a, play, a tagged uh, collection of me using that song and just a picture of me while having Deja Vu. Uh, it's, it's been a fun recurring gag on there. But if you, if you follow me on Instagram, this is the album that that song is from. Um, but not only does it feel like it, it paints the experience of Deja Vu very well. It almost feels like it fits as the ghost, from the ghost's perspective of every day, sort of feeling like this ambiguous familiarity. You know what I mean? Um, and it does it really, really well. I feel like Emerald Tuesday, uh, Hotel Valentine, the, um, the spoken word stuff on Lobby, I think is really just touching in a good, dark, sinister way. You know, I think that the the closing lines, especially of I wonder how many people know their life is like this, staying at a hotel, renting times, renting a body. It just has this cold, again, ghostly truth to it that I think is beautiful. You know, Lobby in general, I think is a great sort of summation of a lot of the ghost's perspective. I think that um miho hattori's spoken word stuff on that song is so well done and again it's sort of this ethereal spookiness that fits so very well in the record's core and there's this darkness in there that extends into housekeeping immediately after that that talks about death in the hotel rooms and stuff like that um and i enjoy the the points where they shift that and they give not just the ghost perspective, but the real world perspective, like in 10th Floor Ghost Girl, a fucking grooving ass, dance driven jam that feels like it would fit well on any James Murphy project. Um, the guitars on that song, mm, so very good. But the, the lyrics themselves talk about looking for this ghost, this ghost that has this enchanting, just attractive rhythm to her, you know, wanting to know where she is and just confess their love to them, you know, can, uh, flipping that into motherfucking nature, doing this environmentally driven song seems kind of like it fits, doesn't fit, but given the fact that it kind of gives both perspectives, it starts with sort of the observational of the world going to shit, but flipping it as eternity as a ghost, you know, it, it almost feels like pointless, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful fucking song. The song reaches... A beautiful climax and empty pool as well has again similarly to lobby these just really haunting well executed ghostly lyrics that i feel like evoke a ghost encounter so very well in in the lyrics you know the the sort of paranoia of the hook of um in an empty pool i was swimming alone 
but I felt someone watching me. You know, I felt somebody touching me. Their heart was floating in the water. You know, it's it's just it's it's a it's a it's a beautifully haunted haunted song that again just fully embodies what this record has going on thematically that I think is truly truly beautiful. You know, I like I, I could gush about I, I love gushing about this record to people and I'm glad I'm finally making this video because I should have made it forever a fucking go. But like seriously, Hotel Valentine is just a culmination of all of the brilliant scene on stereotype um and Viva La Woman fantastically with again this just very serious earnestness to it that almost reminds me of like Beck's Sea Change or aspects of Beck's Wero as far as taking a postmodern artist and embracing that postmodernism but injecting some sincerity in there. I like the fact that the band came in with some fire under their ass without uh, losing sight of a good concept because I like I like the idea as well of just a hotel because a hotel is, is just this an institution at this point. If you go to a hotel, it's usually like an older building or it's it's like a newly renovated building and there's some history there usually. And I feel like that whole aspect of like haunted culture or spooky ghost culture is uh, portrayed really well on Hotel Valentine. You know, I think that it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's truly, truly a beautiful record that upon release, I really loved. I thought it was a great record, and I and I loved showing it to people. But it definitely, I don't think, had the resonance that their early work did, which is disappointing because I feel like for a band to to come back into the scene with this well written, well thought out, well conceptualized piece that still showed their artistry on full display, it absolutely deserved far more recognition. And maybe that's why, I don't know if that's why I've latched onto it so well, but it's just, it's, it's just this gem that dropped in the 2010s that is just a great batch of good grooves, catchy choruses. The choruses on here as well, fantastic. If you want to talk about the songwriting in a completely different aspect, you know, Deja Vu, 10th Floor Ghost Girl, Motherfucking Nature, um, all catchy ass tunes. You know, Miho's voice just slips into the pocket so very well. You know, uh, motherfucking nature is just serene. The way that her voice just soars over all of that noise and just hits my ear in this truly serene way is uh, worth experiencing alone. You want to talk about bops on this record? The opener check-in? It's like two hooks woven together so beautifully while the drums just explode the first hook hook of be free from what you are be free where you are be free from this world like it's just ah so it's so catchy and then just to weave into a tight chibo motto ass groove with um i want to feel falling before you know diving into more of the introspective both worlds ghosts and real world she was fucking weird stuff is caps off the record well and it's a bop and i like the use of the guests on here as well because uh reggie watts is is the most prominent guest on here you know uh, he's on not only housekeeping with his vocal stuffing vocal stuttering beatboxing stuff but he's on uh the end of motherfucking nature and there's another guest on housekeeping that i'm not quite sure who it is even through research i can't really find who it is but they also just add more to the atmosphere of the track if that if that were a way to put it you know housekeeping is the one song that feels the most like a almost like a postmodern joke song but it still fits the edge of the record perfectly i don't know man i i just i wanted to sit down finally actually talk about hotel valentine a record that i keep gassing the fuck up and i feel like while it released in uh february the year that it came out because of the whole love story thing i feel like it fits perfectly in this time of year and i feel like if you want just a tight, little record about ghosts. Look no farther than Hotel Valentine. It's fantastic. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's it. I just wanted to talk about, reflect on the record all these years later. Shortly, or not shortly after, a couple years after Hotel Valentine released, uh, Chibamato did call it quits once again. Miho Hattori dropped a solo record this year that I reviewed on the channel. Yeah, Chibamato aren't a band anymore, which is upsetting. I would have loved to have seen them make more music 
post Telltale Valentine because I think that they channeled a concept really well here, both sonically and lyrically. They made this harmony together, and I would have loved to have seen them either do more of that or just do more goofy stuff. I mean, I feel like these two girls are so very talented, and I feel like they're really, they have really good chemistry that um, I just didn't want to end again, but it has. Chibamato is no more, once again, but still... I feel like in spite of them not being around anymore, this record is completely worth anyone's time that likes any sort of groove-driven, electronic underlaying, or just trip-hop-infused music. You know, it's, it's very much a great experience. But yeah, that's what I got. Have you listened to Hotel Valentine? Amidst my various uh, plethora of suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. If you listen to it after watching this video, what did you think about it? Um, but if you did like this review, this reflection on an album that I really, really love, let me know. Just comments down below. Um, if you want to see more on my music gaming in general and ordinary content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons if you want to join the ranks to get early access content, exclusive content, or to help drive the community. It's linked in the description. I'm going to get out of here, though. I've been following Rack. You guys are good as I was in the situation. And I'll see you another day.